Hello, this is John Smallwood, Certified Financial Planner, Senior Wealth Advisor at Smallwood Wealth Investment Management. Today, we are continuing the conversation on the Wealth Curve Blueprint and the Wealth Curve Scorecard. The Wealth Curve Blueprint is a unique tool that really enables you to get a current snapshot of where you are, see the balance, see the income sources, see the savings rates, see the taxes, see the lifestyle, see the current liabilities, see all those future liabilities that we want to do for our families and ourselves, and then understand how the defense or the foundation is protecting all of this wealth through life insurance and disability and long-term care, future social security and pensions and umbrellas and wills and trusts. All this is crucial to the output, right? Now, over the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about savings rate and tax rate and all those things, right? This lifestyle rate that we're going to be hitting today and discussing is, you know, I said savings rate is probably the most important thing. And I say probably lifestyle rate, the lifestyle is too much or too little. It's not optimal. If it's too much, you'll probably run out of money. And I, and I, a common thing that has happened over the 29 years in dealing with, you know, multiple clients at multiple different times of their lives is that they come in and very quickly off the cuff, they say, Hey, we need $8,000 a month to live our lifestyle. And back in the day, you would build a plan based on the $8,000 a month. And frequently you'd find out that that really wasn't the right number. We didn't factor in this. We didn't factor in taxes. We didn't factor in that. And, and I see constantly people come in with spreadsheets, you know, that are some of the most beautiful works of art that I've ever seen. I mean, they, they, they give me spreadsheet envy. I don't have the, I can do a spreadsheet. I just, they're not pretty. I need to get somebody, I need, I need help make these things pretty. Okay. But it's missing variables. Right. And I think the savings rate for accumulation and the lifestyle are one in two, meaning most important in this battle of creating wealth. Taxes is definitely third, you know, so the blueprint really, if I have income and I save money and I pay taxes and I have a mortgage payment and I have real estate taxes and I have insurance payments, the net of those things should equal lifestyle. If there's credit card debt, the math doesn't work. Meaning lifestyle is greater than that of the sum of those parts. The sooner I get control of the lifestyle and I understand what it is, and I make sure that all these components are an optimal mix, the more money I will accumulate now and the better prepared I could be in retirement to handle that lifestyle rate. Because what you see is a lot of that is going to be hit with, that lifestyle is going to be hit with inflation. The grocery store, the gas, the cars, the lifestyle, the colleges, the things that I'm spending money on are constantly getting hit by inflation. Things are becoming more and more expensive. Then there's planned obsolescence and technological change which is different for each individual person. It's really not, it's not inflation. And a lot of people say, well, that's inflation. And it's truly not. It, planned obsolescence is, I'm recording this on a computer today, right? I've got to buy a new computer every couple of years just to keep pace with the current technology, right? So it's a combination of technological change and planned obsolescence, right? The thing that I bought is no longer valuable right, or worth or, you know, getting me where I want to go, the technology's got so better that I got to have a better one. And then when you think about technological change, you know, when I did my first wealth plan coming out, you know, in the early 90s, most people didn't have a cell phone. A couple of people had them, but it was really reserved for people that were making a lot of money or thought they were making a lot of money, okay? And now everybody's got to, not only do they have a cell phone, and a cell phone plan, and then it was a texting plan, and now it's a data plan, and how much data can you get so you can watch TV on your small device? 
you got a 60 inch or 80 inch TV in your house, but now you're watching on a six, six inch screen on your on your handheld device everywhere. OK, that's technological change. Planned obsolescence, the car, the refrigerator, the dishwasher constantly being done. That's why that savings rate is so important to battle against a big portion of that. But this lifestyle number needs to be constantly reviewed and checked to make sure that it's in the right ratio. If your lifestyle is, you know, 40 percent of your annual income, the odds of you saving any money is pretty low after paying for insurance and taxes and all those other things. The odds of you meeting all those future goals of retirement goals and college and, the, and all that is also quite low. So what we want to do is understand in the blueprint that optimal lifestyle rate that you should be in if you're over, what are the things that we can do to help get that lifestyle down without hurting the core lifestyle? Because as we said earlier in one of the podcasts, you know, you might have a couple hundred dollars a month going out to things that you're really not enjoying and benefiting and getting any value from. And in, you know, I, I was an economics major finance and economics major at Bentley College, which is now Bentley University. And I love my macroeconomic classes. And one of the things that we discussed for many, many times is the is the concept of opportunity cost, but also but measured by marginal utility, better known as utils. How many how many utils, how much enjoyment do I receive for the money that I'm spending? If I'm writing a check for $100 a month and I have zero enjoyment and it doesn't provide any benefits or protection around my wealth and my, my utils are low, I question whether or not I should do that. Okay. So that the lifestyle should be optimal for enjoyment, for protection, for all of those pieces, but it has to be kept in check. If it's over a certain level, you could not have enough protection. You could not have enough savings rate. You could be spending too much money in many, many areas. And the key is once you know what it is, then you can either, you know, we actually have people that come in, the way I'm saying this is, is that we don't, but there are people that don't spend enough money and they've accumulated a lot of money as a result of that. And they're not enjoying their wealth. They need to increase their lifestyle. It's really, as you know, we talk about the fingerprint concept, it's, you, you know, it's unique to you, your lifestyle and that balance between where you spend your money, how you spend your money and what you want to spend your money on in relationship to your income and your future income potential, where is it optimal? And it's unique for each person, but we find that if it crosses over, you know, 30, 35%, the probability of it working long term probably not going to be good. And if you're making a high income and you happen to lose that high income and you haven't accumulated enough savings, it could be really detrimental. Okay, and I think that's something that's really interesting too because you start to you start to look at what are the we're talking about things in a singular fashion, right? One thing at a time by itself, and the reality is. All of this stuff is coming at me at a rapid rate, moving at a rapid rate, and one or two or three changes to all these things, it creates a completely different plan. So as we sit here and we begin to build the plan, when we build the blueprint and you know where your scorecard comes in with the lifestyle, probably one of your most important actions would be to start, how, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to modify this? Because the problem is not the rate of return or your assets. The problem is lifestyle is out of, out of control. So if I can get that in balance, I can increase my savings rate by, you know, if I drop it from 45% to 35% and I was able to take that entire 10% savings from the lifestyle and add it to the savings. Wow. I'm on a much better trajectory. And to me, it's about awareness. If I don't have awareness, it's not going to happen. Welcome to the end of the video. Smallwood Wealth Management is an investment advisor representative. The opinions expressed by Smallwood Wealth Management and guests on this show are their own. 
All statements and opinions expressed are based upon information considered reliable, although it should not be relied upon as such. Any statements or opinions are subject to change without notice, information presented for this educational purposes only. Moreover, no listener should assume that any discussions or information presented serves as a receipt of or substitute for personalized advice from Smallwood Wealth Management or from any other investment professional and is not intended as an offer of solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Smallwood Wealth Management is not a law firm or an accounting firm, and no portion of this presentation should be interpreted as legal, accounting, or tax advice. Information expressed does not take into account your specific situation or objectives and is not intended as a recommendation appropriate for any individual. Listeners are encouraged to seek advice from a qualified tax, legal, or investment advisor to determine whether any information presented may be suitable for their specific situation. Thank you for listening.